Hey y'all and welcome back to the channel or if it's your first time here, welcome especially. I'm Sally and I'm so glad you stopped by. Today we're talking about a very important topic, one that admittedly I feel like I haven't given enough attention in the past um, and that is how to optimize your digestion. Optimize your digestion to beat bloat, beat any of those other aggravating digestive symptoms that many of us have had to deal with at one point or another um, and to literally increase the amount of nutrients that your body absorbs from food because every other system in the body really is dependent upon how well your digestion is going because that determines um, if you're getting what you need. Um, it's not just about what we eat, it's about what we absorb and digestion is crucial for that. Um, so I've been blessed, I feel like, throughout my life with pretty good digestion, which is why I haven't, why I haven't necessarily given it the most attention, but um, as I've been learning more about it, I just want to share what I'm learning because even if you're not, you know, dealing with any of those symptoms, whether it's bloat, gas, constipation, it can be diarrhea, the other extreme, it could be heartburn, all of those often have common roots. Um, but even if you're not dealing with that, we still want to stay on top of optimal digestion so that it lasts us a lifetime. So without further ado, here are my easy tips that you can literally start doing right now. Um, please don't forget to subscribe. If you haven't already, give this video a thumbs up and comment any questions you have down below. Something that's been emphasized repeatedly in my nutritional therapy program is that digestion is a north to south process, meaning if something goes wrong early on in the process, every other aspect of it is going to be negatively affected. And this process actually starts with the nervous system, with the brain. Um, so we need to be, in order to optimally digest our food, um, to experience minimal symptoms and to get the most nutrients out of it in our parasympathetic nervous system state, in that rest and digest state. That is opposed to the sympathetic or kind of fight or flight state that unfortunately given the stress levels that many of us are dealing with we are in most of the time now if your body is in that fight or flight state it is allocating resources to pretty much everything but digestion and rest um, it just doesn't have the time or the resources to give to help your body do what it needs to do in terms of digestion so what that means is that in order to get what we want out of our food, um, we really need to be able to calm down. And there are a few different ways we can do this. Anything, you know, that's going to be relaxing to you, that's going to help calm you down is great. Um, but one of the best things we can do is just take the time instead of eating on the go or always, you know, getting things pre-made, taking the time to prepare your own meal um, and just like carving out the space to do that. Because when you are surrounded by not just the taste of food, but beforehand the sight and the smell of food, and then the calming processes of like cutting up vegetables, putting things in a pan, all the different sounds affiliated with it, you're mouth is already starting to produce more saliva, um, starting to prime the body for digestion, get you excited about it, which again is going to benefit every um, other part of the system down the line. Uh, other things that we can do, especially if we are in a situation where we have to eat on the go, um, to help get ourselves into the rest and digest state, you're going to be just taking a few deep breaths, maybe closing your eyes. You can take four deep breaths, think in through the nose for four counts, out through the mouth for four counts. Even better if we can do this for one to two minutes. Um, and that has a pretty direct effect on your vagus nerve, which is largely responsible for your parasympathetic nervous system and to calming you down and taking you to the state that we need to be in. Also practices like saying a blessing before your meal, praying over it, um, or just practicing gratitude are really fantastic for taking us into that parasympathetic state. If you're going to watch a video or something um, while you're eating, I think that's okay, but can you at least take the time to set down your phone, set down whatever you're going to be looking at for the first few bites so that you can be fully present there and help your body do what it needs to do. The second tip is going to be relatively closely related, and that has to do with chewing your food properly. Now, I kind of dismissed this for the longest time um, because I just didn't realize what all was happening in the body when it comes to chewing. So carbohydrate and lipid breakdown begins in the mouth with enzymes that are in the saliva. And if food is not being chewed enough, if it does not spend enough time in our mouths, 
carbohydrates and the fats cannot um, break down as they are supposed to. Additionally, if we are swallowing bites of food that are too big, that's going to negatively affect the systems further down because um, they're, they're kind of meant to work with a puree, essentially, <laughs> and we're not equipping our bodies with the tools they need to properly digest if we just take a couple chomps and then swallow it down, which I'm as guilty as anyone when it comes to doing this. But we want to aim to chew our food about 15 to 20 times before swallowing. Obviously, it's somewhat dependent upon what you're eating. If it um, is, you know, a crunchy vegetable or if it's something that is like a chewier protein, obviously spend more time chewing it, even as many as 30 chews. That's fantastic. But just count it out. It also will help you get into that parasympathetic state as you're eating, having to take the time to chew your food. And I think it also is really great if you're struggling with kind of appetite regulation to keep your food in your mouth for longer um, has been shown in studies to actually help. So our next points are largely focused on stomach acid production, specifically hydrochloric acid production, which is crucial for so many reasons. But the first two are going to be number one, that hydrochloric acid is responsible for cleaning everything, disinfecting everything that goes into our bodies, into our stomachs. And number two is that it is essential to properly break down our food, get nutrients from it, and kind of kickstart the rest of the process. So if you're someone who has experienced or does experience heartburn or acid reflux, usually the issue isn't actually too much stomach acid, it's too little stomach acid. And this can cause pain in a number of ways, um, but one in particular is going to be that it can cause gas if we don't have enough stomach acid, which is going to press against the esophageal sphincter and cause that kind of lump in your throat feeling. Um, so one thing that I'll say is like a bonus tip is if you are taking some sort of acid reducer, I would just stop, focus on these other tips for digestion. If we need to eat smaller meals, avoid certain foods for the short term, in the short term to help heal our digestive tract, then let's do that. Taking acid reducers is usually just going to make the problem worse in the long term. But in terms of optimizing our hydrochloric acid levels, um, the first thing we can do is make sure that we have dietary protein with each and every meal and snack that we eat. Dietary protein is really crucial for stimulating um, hydrochloric acid production. And if you're eating a super high carb diet or high fat diet without protein at play, you are likely to see um, a deficiency, especially over time. Again, these things build up. It's usually not just like an instantaneous issue that occurs. The next thing we can do to optimize our hydrochloric acid levels in the stomach is going to be to introduce more bitter flavors to our diet, especially at the beginning of or just before um, the rest of a meal. Not only is this going to be great for your stomach acid, but it also stimulates bile production. Now bile is produced in the liver and it is stored in the gallbladder and it is crucial for the breakdown and absorption of fats. If your body is not producing optimal bile, you are not going to be able to absorb fat properly and indicators that this might be going on is if you consistently feel like really sick to your stomach after eating a fattier meal or if you notice that you have floating stools both of these again are going to be indicators that your bio production is not optimal so introducing bitter flavors um, again at the beginning of your meal is a great way to help with both that and your stomach acid levels so examples of what we can do are maybe have a bitter green salad something like arugula or dandelion greens are great to incorporate you could also just do mixed greens um, of course if you want to usually add in some sort of healthy fat to optimize digestion of this get all of our nutrients right there really take your time chewing it um, and start your meal with something like that we could also use something like digestive bitters really just a bitter derivative we'll say of herbs oftentimes that you'll put in your mouth and swallow before a meal in like 20 minutes I think is I don't remember how long they usually recommend but this can be helpful but you don't even need to get fancy digestive bitters if you get like cocktail bitters or something at the store yes those contain like the teeniest little bit of alcohol but it's pretty much equivalent to vanilla extract you can make yourself a fun little mocktail we'll say before a meal so one example is what i did here i muddled some strawberry with the juice of one lime and then i added in some maple syrup as well that was already in the glass and i gave it about 10 minutes just to kind of soak together so the strawberry was easy to mash up you could totally add in some sea salt here it would be fun to like line the rim of the glass with some salt but i didn't do this in this case 
and then I just added several drops of these bitters that I found at Trader Joe's and I put some water on top you can 100% add you know sparkling water or if you have I don't know how coconut water would be but um, maybe like some ginger beer something fun like that we don't want to go too hard with the sugar um, because the point again is going to be those bitter flavors but this is a fun way to uh, have a little drink to sip on as you're making your meal and prime the body for digestion one more tip real quick when it comes to our stomach acid levels is going to be while we're eating not to drink too much water so obviously we want to stay hydrated throughout the day but at mealtime and this has been hard for me to learn hard habit for me to enforce mealtime is not the time to be like guzzling down water think about sipping it as needed but instead of swallowing a bunch of water to get your food down just chewing your food until you're actually able to swallow because um, especially if you struggle with low stomach acid drinking more water or a bunch of water at mealtime can dilute that stomach acid further and cause further problems. The last thing we're going to talk about today when it comes to optimizing your digestion is incorporating an abundance of prebiotic rich foods into your diet. Prebiotic rich foods are the ones that are feeding the happy bacteria in your gut. So think about foods that are rich in fiber coming from you know whole food sources. We can talk about probiotics but I'm just going to leave that for another day. Other people are talking about it plenty but I think most of us are not eating enough fruits and vegetables let alone enough diverse sources of them we want to have a diet that is rich in all sorts of different foods especially when it comes to those fruits and vegetables so that the happy bacteria have lots and lots of different things to feed on so again incorporating things like oats your favorite fruits and vegetables um you know cooked greens are going to be great those dark leafy greens cooking them can often be helpful for digestion same with those cruciferous vegetables and obviously different people are going to be different in terms of what they can tolerate i know that some can't really handle cruciferous vegetables and that's okay um, that might be an instance in which you choose to work with a nutritional therapist or another expert one-on-one -on -one because um, oftentimes those are food sensitivities not true allergies and we can work to uh, heal the lining of the gut which will then make those symptoms better even if it means you know removing them in the short term but that's kind of a tangent all this goes to say eat lots of fruits and veggies but go gently with it if you are not eating a lot of fiber um sometimes our system can be a little bit thrown off kilter if all of a sudden you are adding a ton on top so maybe think about adding one to two more servings of fruits and vegetables to your diet um, each week or every three to four days until we're at that kind of ideal level feel like we are consuming an abundance of plant foods with of course our animal foods each and every day and other things we can really be mindful to incorporate are things like garlic and onions they have been shown if tolerated to really benefit the gut well that's it for today y'all once again thank you so much for being here comment below any questions comments or concerns and i'll see you next time bye y'all